folks. Well, welcome back, or if you're brand new, welcome to the channel. And before you leave, if you see something you like down here in the bottom right hand corner, why don't you hit like and subscribe? And maybe hit that little bell down there and uh, get some notifications when the next video pops up. And tonight, we are going to be making strawberry shortcake. Homemade strawberry shortcake. Now, Anne, I, if you saw my last video, or, more, or actually two videos ago, which would have been in my channel update video, I told you I was going to be making strawberry shortcake. I also told you I was going to begin a new video series of old-time cookbook cooking. And this is going to be the first one of those. And a couple years ago, I had a great friend of mine. Her name is Tanya, Tanya Tellus. And you can see her right over here. And um, her parents were getting into the latter stages of their life. They've both passed since then. And she had to move her parents out of their house into her house where she could care for them. And she asked me to do help her move some things because I have a pickup truck. And as a thank you, she gave me a couple of their of her mom's cookbooks. And this recipe is coming from one of those cookbooks. And so Tanya, this uh, recipe, this is for you. And because um, I know exactly how much your mom and dad meant to you. And so I want to uh, kind of honor them with uh, with something out of uh, one of their cookbooks for you. And so folks, let's get turned around and we're going to see how we do this. Okay, so I've got two big boxes of strawberries here. Two pounds, I guess, which is probably going to be way more than enough strawberries for what I need. But I'm going to go ahead and get these capped off. I should say get the caps cut off. I think I'm going to have to just eat this first one just for general purposes. Mm, strawberries are my favorite fruit. I got some chickens. They're going to love these tops. And I've got a nice little Santuku, Santoku, whatever, um, knife that is great for this delicate kind of cutting. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of strawberries to slice, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got all those sliced up. I've still got all my fingers and no band aids or anything like that. And <laughs> So I've got about three quarters of a cup of sugar here. I'm going to put that right in there like so. And then kind of give them a little toss with a spoon. That sugar is going to give us that nice strawberry syrup. Now then, if you can't find any good strawberries at the grocery store, by all means, go to the freezer section. And you can find good strawberries in the freezer section. And kind of separate these slices a little bit so we get some sugar in between each one of them a little. Those are starting to look good already. I'm going in from the side when I'm stirring these. That way I'm not crushing them. I mean, a few crushed strawberries isn't going to hurt anything, but my goal is not to macerate them. Okay. These are going to go into the refrigerator while we go ahead and make our shortcake. Okay, so our directions here in our cookbook tell us that we need to mix our dry ingredients together. So this is our two cups of flour, all-purpose flour, one half cup of sugar, one half teaspoon of salt, and our one tablespoon of baking powder. There we 
we go. And I'm gonna just kind of mix that stuff together. It'll get another mixing here in just a moment. Now I've got one half cup of shortening here. When all else fails, use fingers. There we go. That's got it pretty well. Now we need to cut in the shortening into the flour. Now this is a pretty short-sided bowl here, but it's the biggest one that's all glad. Well, it's not the biggest. I've got a huge one up there. But at any rate, we're gonna do this on low. Maybe not. I think I may end up wearing it or making a huge mess. There is an alternative. That would be to use two kitchen knives. See how I'm doing that? Forcing it between the tines of the fork against the knife. I think that's got it pretty well broken up in here. I think that's what we want right there. Now this is very close actually to say Bisquick. Now we come in with our two eggs. We're going to kind of make a hole here in the middle. Except for the sugar part. The sugar would not be in Bisquick. We're going to begin forming a dough here. And pouring our milk in. This would be similar to a drop biscuit actually. Again, there would be no sugar. It's getting very stiff now. Last little bit of milk now. I think it's my sugar cookie recipe that I make uh, I have to cut in a shortening like that. Very similar. Okay. I think that's about got it right there. I've got my oven preheating at 375. Now in, in the comments of my channel update video, Joe's BBQ house asked me if I could do some more videos with using cast iron skillets or cast iron cookware and I got thinking I was I was making that or planning this that yes I could think I could use this cast iron skillet the recipe calls for a nine inch cake pan and this is about eight and three quarter inches wide on a skillet and I'm just gonna put this turn this dough right in I don't know batter dough Whatever you want to call it, it says batter, I believe. So into our pan it has gone. Try to get it evenly spread. Now it's probably going to take a little longer on the cooking time being in this cast iron skillet because it's going to take a little time for the skillet to heat up. Kind of working somewhere working when i say working i mean spreading using my fingers and the, the fork it is somewhere between a dough and a true batter like a when i say batter like a pancake batter or a cake batter a traditional cake batter 
you know, very sticky, like bread dough, for example. I think that's got us fairly even, and we can move this baby into the oven for, it says 25 to 30 minutes. I will be checking it at 25 minutes, but I will not be surprised if it doesn't take closer to 35 minutes due to the mass of the skillet here. So here we go. Set my timer. Now appearances would say that it's looking beautiful. I've got myself a knife here. I'm going to stick it in the metal. Now, I didn't feel... That knife came out perfectly clean. And so I'm going to call it done. All right, so our 10 minutes has come and gone. And um, I will just inform you that this uh, skillet is still quite warm. I think our scone will come out of our scone. Our shortcake will come out of there. If I get something to hold on to the skillet with. Yes, there we go. That's beautiful. I must say, it smells wonderful too. How about that? Doesn't that look beautiful? I think so. All right, I'm gonna give this about a good hour to cool down and we'll be back. Okay, folks, so what I wanna try to do, I think, I'm going to use my knife up on the plate, the edge of the plate, to guide me to keep my knife level. It's not long enough to quite reach all the way across the shortcake with a bread knife. And the shortcake still got a little bit of warmth left in it. I'm hoping that we're not too crumbly or anything here. I have to admit, this crack right here has me a little worried. I think we're all the way around, huh? I guess I have to get another plate out. My daughter picked these plates out for me. I had one she was about seven. I've still got every one of them. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Exactly what we were looking for. It is time for me to get my whipped cream out. And if you didn't see that video already, if you look right up here in the right hand corner, you will see a link to it. It's also time to bring these strawberries over. And we're going to start with strawberries on this layer. Well, doesn't that look beautiful already? I better get, I better save some of these strawberries for the top. Holy cow. We used up a lot of strawberries there. It's time to come in with some of this whipped cream that I made. How about that? How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? Now it's time to come back in with our top. Put that right on the top, like so. Now I'm going to come in here. Did I mention strawberries are my favorite fruit? Apples would be second, but they fall down the list. They fall down a little bit. Maybe next time I have to try to make it a little flatter on the top. <laughs> I don't know how I go about doing that. Okay, now we're gonna come back in with some more of this whipped cream. The 
Let's look at that. I can't believe I may have just forgot to turn my camera on. A little while back, Stephen over at Not Another Cooking Show, he turned me on to this ingredient with one of his videos. And these are freeze dried strawberries. These things pack quite the punch as far as flavor are concerned. They remind me somewhat of crunch berries in Captain Crunch cereal. No. Just a little sprig of mint to finish it off. How about that? Isn't that beautiful? Folks, that would be something to really be proud of to have on your table. It is beautiful. Folks, it's that time. It's time for me to cut a piece of this and get over here and, you know, do my thing. Let's see how we're going to do this. <laughs> That looks beautiful. Right onto my plate. How about that? All right, folks. Well, if you know me, I don't have a sweet tooth. My whole mouth is sweet teeth. That's what it is. All right, folks. This is looking beautiful. I'm ready for some of this. You saw it wasn't all that difficult. You could do this. Folks, this is wonderful. But you might need a glass of milk to go with it. I did pretty good here. Mm. Folks, once again, you can do this. Imagine this. On Memorial Day or the 4th of July, instead of putting those freeze-dried strawberries on the top. How about blueberries? Red, white, and blueberry. You get it? <laughs> hmm. This would work perfectly. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. Do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe and stay tuned. There's always more to come and thanks for watching.